everyone. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at hypersonic glide vehicles. Now, I'm going to say vessels probably about 10 times instead of vehicles, but that kind of thing is going to happen. So uh, what do we got here going today? Well, I was doing some reading, and I was actually talking to a scientist guy at a museum when we were looking at missiles. And I was saying, well, what do you think about hypersonic glide vehicles? And he's like, well, I don't think they're the greatest things because of X, Y, and Z. So I said, all right, so when I get home, I'm going to have to go play with them some more in command, which I did. So what we're going to be taking a look at today is kind of a comparison of sort of what they do, what they are, and I hate to say this, and this might be an unpopular opinion, I'd hate to look at the comments afterwards, is um, they're not really all they're cracked up to be, and I'll show you why. So we're going to go ahead and uh, grab our vessel here. This is my Q ship. Q for, I don't know what letter that is. It's an automated vessel. It's basically a container ship with a bunch of... Uh, air you know, IRBMs, and we have the IRCPS here, the Conventional Precise Strike and all that. And even though it says academic and professional only, we can still shoot them, so that'll be kind of fun. So our target is over here. Um, this is uh, basically Baja, Mexico, kind of a thing like that. Baja, California, my bad. And I come down here in the Puerto Bonesca. We have our little kind of a building here. This is a handy-dandy army base. I built a bunch of barracks, like offices, and like ammo sites, and parking lots, and all that. And what we're going to do is we're going to fire a bunch of different types of weapons at it and see what happens. Now, as you probably noticed, uh, we're pretty well protected down there as far as some traditional anti-ballistic missile weapon systems. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to grab my handy dandy uh, ship here. I'm going to hold down control and hit F1. Now you're saying, wait, why don't you do shift F1 like a pro pro? Uh, because sometimes I like to do things manually. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, saturate this place with some ballistic missiles. I kind of picked this. I really hope this isn't like apartments in a university or something like that in the real world. So we'll go ahead and pop a couple IR uh, CPS here. We're going to go fire a couple IR CPS here. We're going to drop a couple IR CPS here. Uh, this is, by the way, the HGV we're going to be testing out here. This is a uh, pretty solid. I don't want to hit this. I think that's a school. So I'm hoping that's not going to hit. We'll drop, oh, I didn't drop enough there. And we're going to drop a couple of, here. this is one of the great things with ballistic missiles is you can manually aim them. Now to join in on the fun, of course, I'm going to go ahead and grab myself some Dolphin uh, 26Ds. These are the conventional ballistic missiles. These things are absurd. I actually kind of, I think they're kind of cool. So I'm actually going to do a couple there. I'm going to go ahead and escape here. We'll go ahead and drop a couple up here because why not? And then we'll go ahead and drop one and eh, right there too. Why not? All right. So we're firing 16 different very, very high velocity weapons at this little army base, which is sort of chilling here. Now, obviously we have some things keeping an eye on stuff and I'll let you use your imagination as to what I parked there to make it possible to identify it. So we've ordered our cruise ship to go ahead, our, our container vessel rather, to start going ahead and firing. Now let's unpause. So as these guys are getting into the launch position, they're raising up right now and pointing up towards the sky. Oh, there goes one of them. We'll take a look at the two weapons. Uh, the first one is the IRCPS. Uh, this is an interesting weapon. And the reason it's an interesting weapon is because it is an HGV. So basically what this weapon does is if you want to imagine this, if this is the ground right here, it shoots up and instead of going, whoa, ballistic, and does one of those, instead what it's going to do is it's going to do this. And the goal here is to try to go up build up a ton of energy, and then drop, and then glide through the atmosphere and go right on the target. Meanwhile, our other buddy who just launched that, the Dolphin, what that's going to be doing is that's actually going to be traveling in a very, very, very tall ballistic arc. We're talking probably a 1,000 kilometers upwards. Now, the theory goes uh, with the HGV, they basically pop up. Obviously, the radar will see you pop up, and then you go underneath, and then the curvature of the Earth prevents you from being noticed, whereas the traditional ballistic missile just goes up and drops down doing, you know, let's say uh, 24 kilometers a second or something like that. Actually, it wouldn't be that high. It'd probably be like seven or eight kilometers a second. It's pretty quick, trust me. So if we go ahead and uh, take a look at our 3D view here, we can see the differences in the trajectories immediately to get an idea of these things. Our IRCPS, as you can see, is a very round... Eh, I would say kind of a leisurely climb here. You know, we've got ourselves, I'm not going to predict what angle that is because I can just look, it's 42 degrees. That's a pretty casual angle given the ranges we're involved here. You know, typically when we fire these things, especially we want to get out of the thick part of the atmosphere and then kind of rip back down and come droppy drop. So I'll go ahead and uh, fast forward time just a little bit here. We need one of the Dolphin to go ahead and be launched as well so we can watch one of those things do their thing. Now keep in mind, there are anti-ship versions. Uh, as you can see, we've already uh, built up... Um, whew, <laughs> I was going to say that was about Mach 30 there. If it's Mach 30, then we're not getting this missile back down. <laughs> not only would it uh, enter orbit, actually it would exceed orbit because that's about double what we need for escape velocity. Actually, I'm sorry. Let's see, it's 24,000 miles an hour. That'd be 48,000 miles an hour would be escape velocity. So yeah, we're, we got a ways to go, but we were very close to escape velocity. Let's call it... Uh, about two-thirds of escape velocity there, so that did not happen. Ignore. All right, one of you guys has to be the Dolphin. Oh, come on, man. Get the missile. I need to watch the trajectory on this thing. You're making me look bad. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. stop, 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 stop. Pause, 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 pause. Okay, see what happened? 
The missile got to the top of its arc and then it released its glide vehicle. This is the platform. This is the actual warhead right here. Let's go ahead and grab onto this guy real quick. So did you see how it went up a little bit? It climbed to about, uh, what do we got for an altitude there? We got about 78,000 feet. And now what it's gonna do is do kind of a, a suborbital little arc here. Remember, there's no boost anymore. This is all a momentum in that big, thick, nasty atmosphere that's all around it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the uh, good old fashioned ASBM. Now notice, Look at the trajectory difference between the HDV here, who's trying to stay low and basically hide under the uh, curvature of the Earth, whereas this guy's like <laughs> YOLO and basically points itself straight up here. So if I speed up time a little bit here, we can actually watch how this uh, kind of shakes out. You can see the HDVs are kind of coming out that way, and you can see our traditional ballistic missiles like... <laughs> I must return to my people and basically points straight up here. Now, this is an interesting, different philo philosophical problem here. It's also a technical problem, depending on uh, if you're on the receiving end or not. Whereas we have these ballistic missiles, which if you take a look at the curvature of the Earth here, let me go ahead and I'll bring myself over to where our target region is. Uh, you can't quite, yeah, I can see that with the radar. You can see I already have the ability to see them way off in the distance, whereas the HDVs are still hidden by the horizon here. So I have a pretty safe warning that this thing has been fired. I mean, the reality is there's these things called satellites that can obviously look down and see this bright flash. Plus, these guys are traveling in the atmosphere doing, I don't know, let's take a look here. We're doing a Mark 6. So, um, yeah, we're making a lot of heat. You'd be able to see us pretty well. So they're going to be cruising towards the destination. You can see they've already started their downward trajectory. Even though if you look at the actual map itself, we have uh, 760 nautical miles to travel here in order to be able to safely go. So the idea here is it's going to go into the atmosphere and basically choo-choo at not low altitude, obviously, the air's too thick, but lower altitude to irritate the interceptors that are no doubt going to be attacking us any second here. Now, if you watch this thing from the top, you'll see how my HDVs are basically doing a little train right towards the target. And meanwhile, my two ASBMs are like, oh, watch this as they climb up. Uh, meanwhile, this other missile here. Uh, oh, that's right. We have a couple of those um, that are still climbing upwards, are making their way towards the target region as well. So now, of course, I don't just let this target zone, you know, just be able to get victimized by a bunch of high velocity weapons. That would just be too much fun. So instead, what I did is I'll turn on God's eye view here, is I provided them with a couple of different resources to be able to spot these weapons. Now, let me switch real quickly to the other team and you'll notice that we've already picked up the hgvs as a matter of fact we picked up the hgvs about 430 miles away which is plenty of room to start dealing with interceptors meanwhile our big 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 nasty uh, ballistic missiles here we spotted them for a second and then we lost them because they basically went so let me zoom out on the earth here they basically went so vertical that my beam of my radar which would kind of do this kind of a thing no longer sees above it because the angles and the geometry are just a little bit too steep there but these guys are now cruising through the atmosphere fairly predictable trajectory doing Mach 4 that's it. Uh, Mach 4 is not a project to hit. So we'll go ahead and uh, speed up time a little bit here and let them continue their little choo-choo. Meanwhile, the other missiles are at very high altitude right now. And here comes my first row of interceptor weapons. Now, this was the mistake on my part. Now, you're probably saying, well, that was easy. What are these? Well, these are THADs. Uh, these are designed for exoatmospheric kind of interceptions. They're pretty good at it. And they have pretty good reach as well. Now, you're saying, wait a minute. Why was this a mistake? Well, it's a mistake for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, we've got a bit of a reach here, which means we need to have a really precise shot. The other problem is the last part of the trajectory of an HGV is to drop into a lower part of the atmosphere. So if I actually were to grab onto this thing again real fast, see how it's actually starting to duck downwards, kind of getting into the thicker parts of the atmosphere. And it's also starting to pick up some energy here as it's um, making its descent. So our current altitude on this weapon right now is about 120,000 feet, which means my THADs, even though they fired perfect time for that original upwards trend, is now going to go right over the top, or they'll duck behind the curvature of the Earth there's a weapon, before it even has a chance to take a shot at it. Now that's a point in the HGV's little corner here. So let's go ahead and switch to the other guys real quick. We can see kind of what's happening. So what's going to most likely happen is every single one of these missiles is going to basically go smacking into the ground as it tries to dive below where the HGVs are. I think that was just a little bit too much of a reach on that shot there. Of course, it'll make a liar out of me and take them out one by one. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Whoa, there they go. Whoa, ew. And there comes the first round. So now these, you know, relatively uh, high drag objects are now being struck by these weapons that were intentionally designed for other types of exoatmospheric interceptions, but they're having an easy time of it because, again, it's still a more or less ballistic trajectory. And I know many of you are screaming in the comments right now saying, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought that these things could maneuver once they get in the atmosphere. Yeah, they totally can. But one of the things you have to remember is if I have something this big and it's traveling 
looking at, uh, what do we got right now? Mach 4. If I need to make a turn of any significance, that's going to create a tremendous amount of drag, which means, yeah, I'll definitely block that first one that hits me, but that second one is going to have no problem with the intercept because I burnt up so much energy as I tried to make some sort of turn. Remember, if my speed is 7 kilometers a second in this direction, and I need to take, let's say, a 30 degree turn, you have to make up enough energy to engage that acceleration in that direction against the speed you're traveling at now. Another way to think about it is you're dealing with basically a cruise vessel that's trying to skid on ice. And when it does is it loses a significant amount of its speed. Now, this guy is just going for the win here. He's, uh, he's working on it. He's working on it. He's working on it. Boom, he's out of the air. Fight's over on that. Now, you probably said, didn't you fire something else a minute ago? I did. Let's go switch to the other team real quick and see how our ballistic missiles are doing. That was 12, by the way, and those things are not cheap. So now we have our handy dandy ballistic missiles. I actually have to zoom out. And they've started their reentry process. Uh, they're coming in. This is a 160 kilometers vertically here. And they're starting to drop out of the atmosphere here and drop <laughs> what atmosphere? LOL. They probably passed the ISS on the way down. Let's see, ISS is what, 360 kilometers? Yeah, they went by the ISS and went back past it again, kind of a thing like that. Wouldn't that be something neat to see? Just go, broop, broop. oh, there goes the end of the world. It just went by my window. So um, these guys are now entering the um, atmosphere. Obviously, uh, they spent a long time building up energy, and they've got to kind of cancel that energy out as it comes off flying back in here. Now, our good friends down here are now looking up at a target that is outside of the atmosphere with no you know, atmosphere that you have to stress out about. So, of course, they're going to be like, well, wait a minute, I can intercept that. Let me go and press Control-V here. As a matter of fact, not only are they going to intercept that, but the missiles are already here. <laughs> you could see that those R3s are about to say hello. Uh, they're not R3s. Obviously, these are the SM3s. These SM3s are going to come and greet those ballistic missiles, which have very, very, very... Now, uh, let, let's call it no maneuverability at these kinds of altitudes. So this thing continues traveling. Whoa, <laughs> where are you going? I guess you want to go home because you got you missed. You feel sad about it. Yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, the rest of these guys, of course, will I uh, do the deed here? I'm pretty confident. Hey, how are you gonna eat that? Oh man, bang, 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 bang. Done. <laughs> So uh, what's my point here? Uh, first of all, uh, don't uh, hate on, uh, obviously, anti-ballistic missile technology. Uh, the other thing you need to know is that the HGV, because of all the wonderful features that they added to it, creates a massive, massive engineering challenge because how on earth are you supposed to design a weapon that doesn't have a motor anymore and has to maneuver in an atmosphere that causes drag. It just would slow it down to nothing, allowing conventional weapons to basically do the deed right away. So you could see pretty much instantly just how effective that was at actually engaging and destroying those weapons. Now, some of you, of course, are saying, well, um, well, I, I, I mean, these targets, uh, they, they didn't get hit. Uh, do you have something that works? Well, you know, let me show you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab myself something a little different here. I'm going to get myself a B-52 here. And I know exactly what you're thinking. You're like, oh, you're going to get a JASM. I'm going to be like, no, yeah, I am going to get a JASM. Now, this is a different weapon. This thing has its own engine. It travels a lot slower, but it also, you basically cannot detect it. Let's see, that gets us 12. That gets us 24. Ah, that's, that's a good number right there. Uh, let's see, AGM 188s. Let's go ahead and grab that. I'm going to hold that shift F. Whoa, can't be in God's eye view. Might be, might be. Press shift F1. We're going to go zoom in on my little target region here. Click on this one. Oh, plenty of things to shoot at here. Select them all. Uh, let's see here. All of you get one. Boop, boop. And we'll fire an extra in here. Why not? Yeah, okie dokie. Success. All right. So keep in mind, uh, JASMs are not cheap. So uh, we're going to go ahead and line ourselves up. And we're going to start distributing these. Again, just a few, just a few. Let's see here. I got eight to go. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And I'm out of him and I exploded too. <laughs> so let's go switch over to the other guys real quick. We have no knowledge that we've just been launched at with a bunch of cruise missiles. And uh, obviously, we don't detect the B-52 anymore. We can't launch anything at it. Meanwhile, these things are navigating uh, very carefully. They're coming through nasty weather. They're going through you know hills and valleys. They're going to come popping out here. And uh, my world's most sophisticated little devices here are looking into the sky right now saying, you know, up there somewhere could be another one of these HGVs, which is going to make things kind of interesting for us. So we're cruising. Oh, there they are. Everybody go ahead and lock on to them. I got my brand new Patriot system. This is the Lambda system. This is one of the nicest ones they are. Um, you can see that they're locking, they're firing up their fire control radars. They're trying to get a nice a fire control quality lock here. Um, everybody's getting ready. Oh, oh the Patriot's doing its thing. Fire. <laughs> Um, that's the new Patriot, by the way. All right, it's gonna go. Oh, got one of them. Looks pretty good. Okay, here comes the delivery. Oh man, isn't that not satisfying? 
And now we have a deflection shot. Not going to go so well. And boom, 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 boom. And I've run out of missiles. And boom, there's another one uh, hitting the target. Oh, notice, by the way, we did no damage to the school or the church that I created there. And we've done quite a bit of deed on this without uh, too much interference. Obviously, we only blew up some of the buildings here. But um, that was pretty darn accurate. And it, you know what it did? It wasted an awful lot of missiles trying to get shot down there. So if I go over to losses and expenditures, you can see we lost a few buildings here, plus my diesel. Uh, we went through a few of these uh, trying to do stuff. On my side, of course, I fired 24 of these, which would be pretty much the budget of some small countries. Uh, all we fired all these, and nothing succeeded. And I went through a bunch of these as my B-52 desperately tried not to get exploded by most most likely one of the SM6s here. So uh, what are the big takeaways? Uh, the big takeaways are if you are going to be using any of these type style weapons against targets, you have to remember that you're gonna have to really saturate or at the very least do something with the interceptors. The other thing we saw was while it was this wonder technology, it was no better even with multiple against conventional technology just because of the fact that it travels so much slower in the atmosphere because of how thick it is. Whereas our ballistic missile, they did a decent job. Obviously, I don't need to just fire six of these. I could fire 400 of these. And I guarantee you, they will get through. But other than that, enjoy.